Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Grandmaster Independiente in the three-minute pool on ICC. Okay, um, let's play Karokan. Last time I swindled this guy pretty uh, badly, if that's the proper way to phrase it, in a Scandinavian. <laughs> yeah, I guess it wasn't that bad, but I was down a queen at the end of the game, and I certainly should have lost, but I flagged him. <laughs> I'm going to play maybe about half hour today. Hmm. Knight here. I think I could play bishop g4. I'm actually going to try bishop g4 and then e6 and try to get the pawn back later. I don't know how this will turn out, but we'll see. Likely he'll play bishop e3, looking to hold the c5 pawn. He might play b4. It's another possibility. Okay, he takes. Now is he going to play b4? Or bishop e3? Because he doesn't want me to smoothly recover the pawn. Hmm. He's going to let me do this. Okay, well, in the interest of keeping it simple, let's do this. Maybe queen g3. I can't predict any of his moves. <laughs> Just another day at the office, right? This somewhat reminds me of a Sicilian, the pawn structure. Occasionally in lines of the open Sicilian where white takes on c6, this pawn structure will crop up. I could take that even, as this pawn is covered. Probably not. Well, maybe I can take and play queen d5 which could confuse him at the very least. If takes, there's queen g4, though. Yeah, I better just castle. Just get our king to safety. Maybe knight g6 coming up to attack e5. This pawn is looking lonely at the moment. Once again, I could take this if I want. But let's do this. We'll be solid. We'll keep this pawn planted on d5 and go after the e5 pawn instead. I'm thinking even bishop d4 could help in trying to win that pawn. It's a little after 11 o'clock p.m. I had a good day, full day of work and such. Here I'm very tempted to play f6 because I think I can uh, induce a trade and get at f2. Just thinking if there's a better way to do it. Queen to h4 also comes to mind, but let's keep it simple. He might play queen g4. That's probably his best bet. Yeah, he can't stand to capture and allow me to play rook takes and attack f2. So queen g4 hitting the pawn is advisable, I think. I'll probably take with the pawn just because I don't see another good way to play it. If knight takes, queen takes e6 is check. Yeah, let's just take this way. He's going to take e6 and let's hide our king. Got a bit of a time edge. Nothing substantial, but I like it. Still hitting f2. He plays a very passive move. Okay, so maybe queen h4 looking to further attack f2. Any other way to do this? Rook f6, he has queen g4. Yeah, let's go here. All hands on deck to hit this pawn. I'm also threatening queen takes c4 in many cases. Like if rook e2, queen takes c4, and then his rook is under fire as well. Plays bishop e3. So queen takes c4 would run into rook c1 now. Probably taking is advised. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. I think I can just play queen takes c4. Although he's going to go rook c3 then. And he has some annoying counterplay. So a little irritating. <clears throat> queen takes c4, rook c3, queen e2 maybe. Okay, I'm going to do that line. I can't spend too much time. Just going to have to let this happen. Go with the flow. He's going to win c6, but maybe I'll get my knight into f4. Queen e1 is a potential issue for him. Let's in fact play that right now, just because it forces his king to a bad square, I think. And maybe knight f4? Yeah, looking to threaten knight e2 in a lot of cases. Got to watch my back rank. Queen takes a8 doesn't work, but ideas like that are in the air. I think throwing in queen e1 was a nice way to play this, because this knight is stuck now. He would just lose the rook in the corner. And knight e2 is on the agenda. I don't see how he stops that. He could play rook e3, but knight e2, he's giving an exchange to parry queen g1 checkmate. You try h4, but that's not going to help help much. 
He's burning a lot of time now. Yeah, that's simply too much time. So if we go here, any tricks that he has? Not that I see. Let's do it. Take this guy. Take this guy. Um, you know what? I'm just going to play h6 just to make sure we never get back rank checkmated. Back rank checkmate, not even once. Okay, let's attack his queen. He's far too low on time now. And we have a winning position. Push this guy. Queen e5 now an issue for him. We can swap the queens. He is blockading for the moment. Hardly a problem. Let's push these. Yeah, and he lost on time. So I went for the initiative there, starting with f6. This position just strikes me as a bad one for white. I may even have calmer ways to play it. Bishop d4 came to mind, attacking the pawn on e5. I dislike how he handled that. I was trying to remember the theory, honestly, because when they take the pawn on c5, there's some active ways you can play to try to get the pawn back. In addition to knight c6, you can also just play e6 straight away. And I'm pretty sure bishop g4 is not the move here. I think I'm supposed to play just e6 right away. But in three minutes, I like to experiment. Okay, so since this is a fairly short session, let's get back in the pool. Got a win against a GM under our belts. Good way to start the session. Who is Independiente? I think he's anonymous. For a long time, this guy was an IM. And then one day, he had GM next to his name. So he must have made Grandmaster at some point. Okay, Green Skull. Let's play E4 this game. Nice land at Grandmaster, huh? Okay, let's play B3. Been having success with B3 setups for some reason. Let me see who this player is. Also anonymous. Maybe I'll go for a double Fianchetto here. G3, Bishop G2. Looks kind of feisty. You can play D6 and try to break up the center. Okay, well, at least I get to do this now, because if knight takes e5, bishop takes. So how best to defend this pawn? Queen e2 walks into knight d4, so I'm guessing just knight f3. I could push the f pawn, but I think developing is in order. Maybe I'll send this knight up to b5 or something. He's going to reposition. It's interesting. Where is he going? f5 or g6? Eh, regardless, I'll just castle. And then defend the pawn like this. Maybe h4, h5. I'm trying to chase him away. Or even knight c3 comes to mind right here. Let's go h4. See where he wants to run with that knight. He doesn't want to run at all. Okay, let's do this now. I'm going to try to menace knight b5. He's not impressed. Okay, knight e4. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to see if he'll take on e5. He might have to give up this rook in the corner to do it. He might do it just because it's interesting. No, nah, he's going to back away. Okay. So check followed by take g7 or something else. I can play knight g5. Let's play knight g5. I'm going to attack f7 instead. See what we can cook up that way. Queen e2. He's got a time edge on me. Uh, but he blundered this, as far as I can tell. That's why I put my knight on g5, and he just resigned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some days it's easier like this. Yeah, this is precisely why I played knight g5. So as to dissuade him from castling queenside. But I guess he just forgot, or didn't realize it. Weird setup. Somehow the, the Fianchetto setups have been clicking for me lately, and I can't explain it. It would have been intriguing here if after knight e4 he had played knight takes e5, because notice that my knight is interfering with my rook's defense of the e5 pawn. So let's say knight g takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5. I can continue with something like, let's say knight f6 check, g takes f6, bishop takes e5, f takes e5, bishop takes a8, but he might have something like d5 and my bishop could be shut in. I'm not going to analyze that, but 
Uh, that's just an example of how it could continue. Azme Parashvili. Okay, this is a strong player. Wow. And he must watch my videos. He knows I'm uncomfortable against the Grob. So, uh, you know what? Let's do this line again. This is kind of a crazy line, but it's interesting. This is this guy. Okay, so he's he's been in the high 2600s before, maybe even over 2700 FIDE. And he's also the former FIDE vice president. Is he the current FIDE vice president? I don't think so, but uh, he, he, he was at least the former that I know. Okay, here D3 is supposed to be good, right? Let's just do that. And he was involved in a famous headbutting incident. Yes, you heard me correctly, a headbutting incident. <laughs> so you can Google that if you like. Uh, let's take here. Got to take with a queen, I think. So is he going to continue d4, like try to play in the center somehow? This is There's a pin going on here, so I'm not worried about that. But I want to bring my pieces into the fray. Let's just play e6 for now. Well, actually, there's some issues with uh, the knight coming to b5, isn't there? Uh, maybe I can do this. I'll play bishop d6 if his knight jumps in. I know, but he can go... Uh, this is Yeah, he can do that. Okay, I have to play this move now, I think. I realized too late that knight d5 was a problem. I don't know why I insist on playing this line every time. It's not like this line has to be played against the grob. Here, queen f3 is probably a good idea. He takes, okay. So, hmm. Maybe I can play knight here. Yeah, let's develop. I'm not going to play queen takes d5. I'm just going to try to develop as rapidly as possible. Stop him from castling. Let's get ready for rook e8. At least his structure's a mess. I mean, he's up material, but his position's pretty ugly. Not like mine is any prettier, but... Zurab Azme Parashvili. Contemporary of Kasparov as well. This might be the most Georgian name I've ever seen, by the way. Like, when I think of a Georgian name... The country, not the state, obviously. Like, I think of a name like Osmai Parashvili. <laughs> okay, queen c4, sensible. Uh, I can give a check and play rook e4. How about that? Forces king to some awkward square. Ah, he's going to run that way. Savvy, savvy, savvy. Okay, well, let's continue. I'm trying to take this pawn, purely. Knight takes... G4? Is he going to play rook E1 then? Some weird stuff going on. I can almost play bishop takes D4. It doesn't work though. Hmm. Knight takes G4, rook E1. What am I playing there though? Let's see a good follow up. I can play rook takes G4. Let's do rook takes G4. Yeah, he's pinned anyways, so might as well. Maybe he'll play rook G1. Bishop G5. Hmm. Take, knight takes, rook takes g5, knight c6. Hmm. Again, don't want to spend too much time, but I feel like I got to get out of this mess a little bit. Okay, let's go here. Just going to play solid. I'm not expecting him to take, but I'll just get ready for that. Down a little bit of time. Hmm. Yeah, I see your point there, buddy. Okay, let's do this. I got to get that bishop out of operation. He might go queen c6 now. I think I'm going to have to roll the dice and play queen b8 then. He's going to play that one. Huh. Okay, well, let's take... Rook g1 check not working, huh? Okay, let's go here. At least my knight guards the e8 square. I have that going for me. Okay, let's give a check. If he goes rook back, I'm going to play knight takes d5. This is the point. Now knight e3 is a threat. I'm fortunate to have seen that. I'm not sure how great this is still, but it's something. Yeah, knight e3 is a very big threat. What's he going to do with his king? He's got to find some way out. If king goes back to the first rank, then I have rook g1 check. This is the sort of sloppiness you can expect out of a grob. 
<laughs> Just a grob melee. I might be winning here. If king d3, knight f4. Queen b3 would drop the rook. So I don't see a good way for him to continue. I just cycled through all of the candidate moves. Of course, if queen takes d5, we're recapturing, and we're also defending this. So yeah, this is just going to lose the queen. Gather that. And win the game if we don't blunder. Go take some free pawns. Okay, we'll take that one. Run this pawn. The outside passers. As far away as, from the king as possible. All right, so we win. <laughs> Heck of a messy grob game, that one. He's 2489, wow. He's got quite a high three-minute rating. So this is uh, one way you can play against the grob. You can try to turn the tables on them, even though bishop takes g4 has often been given as a mistake in view of c4 and then if c6, c takes d5, c takes d5, queen b3. There's this kind of cool sacrifice line. D4 takes, knight D7, take, take. And I saw this recently when Kristoff played a game against a guy named Grob here on ICC. And Kristoff played it similarly, except he took on C4. And I think in the analysis, he even said that was a mistake. Because you want the pawn to come to D4 specifically so you can play this D3 disruptive move. And in this game, I'm not going to claim that I played that well or anything. The position is just messy. And the tactics worked out for me. I was having my doubts right around here, but knight e5, possibly, well, that move might be okay. Maybe right around here, white has to play something better. If we count the material, I'm just down a pure exchange, but his pawns are weaker than mine, especially the center pawns. He's just got a lot of loose stuff, and his king is a big question mark. And that was enough for me to whip something up, and suddenly after knight takes d5, it's over. I don't see anything good for white. All right, that was a fun one. Let's play one or two more games. He's repping the Russian flag, but I'm pretty sure yeah, he's Georgian. Hmm. Kochol Nero. Let's play d4 this game. Hmm. Let's play a Trumpowski bishop g5. Keep it off beat. It's been working so far today. I'll play h4. This move isn't very good. I have a, a friend... An old friend from here in Minnesota who always played this way in the tromp, he would specifically play h4. Like, he loved this variation. Okay, let's play c3 just to blunt this bishop. Black has the two bishops. White has a bit more space. Sometimes if black castles, like, they have to be concerned that white will attack them down the h-file. Let's play bishop e2. I'm wondering if this knight will come to e5. I'm thinking about going f4, in fact. Let's play a5. Just to carve out a little niche on the b6 square, if he decides to allow us to use that. Hmm. Okay, let's develop. And I'm going to pre-move this move. And we'll take here. He's a little cramped. Knight c4 coming next, potentially. I think he wants to go knight e5, but he knows that I can always play f4 if that happens. Okay, so he, his plan might be to play knight e5 next, but then I can swap and maybe play knight c4. If I could get queen d2 working, that would be nice. I still have a grip on this square. This is pretty interesting. Let's go queen d2, though. I may just castle and then play my rook over to h8 and go from there. I know castling seems kind of crazy in this position, but I don't see a reason not to. Knight into b6. Maybe. Yeah, let's do it. Pulls the bishop back nice and solid. Hmm. Okay, let's continue with f4. Obviously, I'd like to get at his king. It's it's nicely buttressed by his two bishops now. Bishop d7, that's an odd-looking move. Just changing his mind. Huh. Well, let's get the rook over for one thing. Hmm. So f5 or something else. Maybe queen h4. He has e6 ideas. 
f5 takes queen g5 am i threatening anything that's the big problem i may not be threatening much there mm, using a lot of time let's go g4 hmm that's an interesting reply i don't think that's a good idea though he gets control of the dark squares but i'm playing g6 next move if i get a chance He's got to be careful now, I think. Okay, so am I going to do this or something different? C4, maybe. Maybe C4. Yeah, let's go C4. Kind of lock in my knight, though, playing this move. Let's go... Hmm. Let's go here. Just get rid of that pawn. And try to open an avenue for our bishop. And queen, actually. Bishop and queen to attack down. Let's go here. So trying to get the queen into h7. Let's give a check. Yeah, he's got this idea on g5. How strong is that? I don't know. I'm just going to take. And then we're going to hide our king. i got to worry about the time. Rook f1 is coming, though. I figure that must be worth something. Is he going to bail with his king, king e7? He's going to trade. Hmm. Okay, well, let's bring this down. Check doesn't do much. Okay, let's go here. He could back us off, though, with his king. My bishop is really strong. Okay, let's go here. So introducing threats with this. Um, let's go here. Maybe knight d7 coming up. He's going to blitz me out, perhaps. This looks bad for him, though. If he takes, rook f7 is coming. That's got to be awful. Simply has to be. Okay, check. We're going to take that way. And then we're going to take here. We're going to go b7. Yeah, this is going to be over, I think, if I can figure out a way to exploit my material edge. Because now he can't move. This is his problem. So I can almost just walk my king up to a7. Yeah, he's just completely stuck. Get the king all the way in and bye-bye rook. I have 14 seconds, but I'm not going to blow it in 14 seconds. Let's actually pre-move this move. Yeah, he's trying his last tricks. Let's take his stuff. All he has is stalemate tricks, but again, I'm not going to blow this. Oh, fun one. Yeah, so he resigned. So that was a Trumpowski that went well, I think, right off the bat. Well, not right off the bat, but I feel like if black never castles here, their king is more of a question mark than my king. It's just in more jeopardy. So the thing I didn't like about the way he played it is it seemed like right around here after I played knight b6, he hesitated. He played bishop e8 and then bishop back to d7 on the next move. Almost like he didn't know what to do. In fairness, his position might be bad at this stage, though. And then it was kind of kind of messy here after. e5 was a clearance move. If I don't play e5, I feel like he's going to settle his bishop here and blockade. And I might regret not having an open b1 through h7 diagonal. Yeah, and then I had some initiative on the 7th rank. I kind of think I missed something right around here. I thought about e7 check, but if e7 check, he can just play king g8. He doesn't have to take my pawn. And right here, he probably has to play rook to d8 instead of taking on d7. I think taking on d7 gives me too much domination of the 7th rank. So if he had played rook d8, he might lose the b-pawn. Uh, maybe I can play knight takes e5 and bishop takes b7, but somehow that feels like a better chance at least. 
Okay, I'm going to wrap this session up here because I need some time to upload it. But yeah, I played four games, all against uh, title players, two GMs, two IMs, and we were 4-0. Four, four oh, so uh, pumped up my three-minute rating. Fun games. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.